Hey guys and welcome back. So last week we went up to Bamber Castle which for some of you may be a really familiar name. For those of you who don't know I'm going to guess that you've not seen the TV show The Last Kingdom on Netflix or read the Bernard Cornwall books and my god you are missing out massively. So the series follows the story of Uchla Bebenbe, a Saxon nobleman who's captured by the Danes and raised as one of their own. Uchla Bebenbe or Uchla Ragnarsson is the protagonist in both the Saxon stories and the Last Kingdom TV series. To just give you a little bit kind of why this is so relevant, he was originally named Osbert, but after the death of his older brother, Osbert's name was changed to Uhtred and became the heir of Bebimber. Bevenbert and Bamber are the same place. Following the capture of the Danes, who would soon adopt him as their own, his ambitious uncle Elfric took his throne and desired to have him killed. Uchtred's time with the Danes led him to adopting their ways. Following the murder of his adopted parents and grandfather, Uchtred desired to reclaim his birthright at Bevenbert. Now I'm not going to give any more of the story away, it really is worth a watch or read or whatever your preferred method is, but it is amazing even if you just watch it for the main character, I mean, come on. So I'm currently working my way through the books and I absolutely love the TV series. You can imagine how excited I was when I found out that if we went to the castle itself, they would have props. It was an exhibition of The Last Kingdom, mainly to do the movie because the movie does talk and, sh and show images of the castle but we just absolutely had to go. So we drove up to Newcastle, stayed overnight, and then drove an hour north to Bamba. And we were so excited to see the exhibition. I've been to, you know, the Harry Potter studios and that's such an experience, it's so much fun. But that really wasn't the highlight of the day. The castle itself is absolutely amazing. It's in a beautiful village, it's on a beach, and it, it's just so impressive. But the history itself, it, it's phenomenal. So before I give you my review of the castle, of the exhibition, things like that, I'll just give you a bit of backstory around the castle to give you kind of an idea of how long it's been there and what it's been through. So it is located in a quaint village on the coast of Northumberland and has an incredible history. Now it's probably about half an hour from the border of Scotland, it's an hour and a half from Edinburgh, so you're really close to another major, major city. If you wanted, you could fly to Edinburgh and then drive down. So the earliest recording of this castle is in 547 AD when Northumbria was the largest and most powerful of the Seven Kingdoms. Between 700 and 993, so Northumbria was subject to a hundred year invasion by the power hungry leaders of rival kingdoms. In 993, Vikings ransacked Bamber, taking plunder and burning buildings. Now the Vikings killed the monks, so in retaliation the English killed the Danes and now the skin to church doors. I imagine it's to serve as some sort of warning to any future Danes, this is, this is what we will do. After this happened however the fortress did then fall into disrepair. In 1905 forces sent by William Rufus who was the son of William the Conqueror arrived and tried to take power from the Northumbrian kings. Due to that proximity of Scotland, Bamba became an important border garrison and was therefore a strategic outpost for the English crown. As a result, the mighty keep was erected and it remains the heart of the castle even today. Between the 12th and 15th centuries, Bamba became a palace for monarchs such as John Henry III, Edward I, II and III, but it also served as a place to keep prisoners such as David Bruce, the Scots King. It is, however, Henry III for introducing the Great Hall and glass windows into the castle. In 1464, civil war swept the country during the War of the Roses. Now this was a war between the Royal House of Lancaster and York. At this time, Bamber Castle was home to Henry VI of the Red Rose of Lancaster and the castle came under cannon fire. Now this castle at this point has survived centuries of every kind of armed assault. However, Bamber then became the first castle in English history to be destroyed by cannon fire and you actually there are still some cannons there and obviously they're plugged but they're, they're there and it looks it's really impressive to imagine how this fortress could have defended it, itself from ships and enemies coming in from the water. So skipping forward a little bit in times 
So let's go to 1894 when William Armstrong brought Bamber Castle for £60,000. On today's money, that is just shy of £10 million. I mean, 60000 that's a bargain, right? Look at the value of it now. William Armstrong also had a vision of establishing a home for a retired gentleman to recover from illnesses, also known as a convalescence. However, William Armstrong was an absolutely incredible man and he made his money in hydraulic machinery, ships and armaments. And there is actually an aviation museum there and you can see his name on a lot of things that he was instrumental in helping design or create. So today, Bamba is still in the Armstrong family. I think it's five generations have now had it and they are so committed to preserving the history and making sure that the castle estate and the fortress are kept up as much as they can. So there is so much history, but I have actually skipped a lot of it, but it is definitely a rabbit hole I could get into when I was deciding how much to put into this video. I wanted to put all of it in, but obviously wanted to make sure that you guys didn't get bored of that. So let's actually talk about the exhibition. Let's talk about the castle and the grounds itself to let you know if I think it's worth going. Now, obviously I've said it's beautiful and I've said that it's you know it's on a beach and there's a lot there but it is a long way now from where we live it took us because of traffic it took us five hours to get to Newcastle should have taken four and then a further hour to get to Bamber so the all day parking you do have to pay for is five pounds all day for five pounds that's an absolute bargain and that means also you can go in onto the beach as well and you can go to and from the castle back to your car so is quite convenient. Adult tickets were £17 each so again it's actually not too bad and when you think that money is going towards the preservation of the castle I wasn't worried too much about paying that so all in all a trip to the castle and the parking is going to cost you just over £40 if there's two of you. So in the castle itself we spent about two to three hours going around the castle and the grounds because there is a lot to take in. So you've got the main castle, there was a Saxon camp as well where you could look at what they were doing, they are making coins, um, there were fires and things going as well. You could just stand and just look out if you wanted to for hours, it's really pretty. Or you can go inside the castle now, as I mentioned, the museum, we did that, we were in there for a little while, but inside the castle, there's things like the armory, and we spent a lot of time in the armory because it was just so interesting. There are some videos as you go around as well. I think there is a 20 minute presentation you can sit and watch. We didn't actually see that, but it will talk you through lots of areas you're actually not able to get to. So for instance, there are private apartments where the family still live, and there is actually an archaeological dig going on at the moment so we couldn't get down to where the old castle was but there was a section where we could see down and they were doing digs and things there and they were finding lots of really cool and interesting stuff so we couldn't get around to certain parts but there is a video to talk about the rooms you can't get into the grounds themselves are amazing the, the grass is immaculate and it is actually dog friendly the grounds are dog friendly, the castle obviously isn't, and one thing I would be wary of is that they don't allow wheelchairs, walking aids or push chairs inside, mainly because there's something like 84 steps to get around the castle and a lot of the hallways are quite narrow, so it's not really something you'd want to be trying to figure out anyway, but that's just something to sort of keep in mind. So if you are going up there and you wanna take your dog, you need to have at least someone else with you so they can look after the dog whilst you go in and then you can obviously swap over. There are also picnic benches and other benches and places to sit around the castle. Now there's certain places they ask you not to sit because maybe it's a chair that's like a couple of hundred years old and probably fall apart when you sit on it but inside the castle and also on the grounds there's other places that you can sit down and you can just take in the area or you can have your lunch. There are a couple of cafes on site. Now we didn't use those, we took a meal deal with us, but there is a dog friendly cafe and there is a tea room if you did want to stop and have something there. So I'm not 100% sure of the prices of these and how reasonable they are, but it's probably safe to assume it will be something like festival prices. So maybe a little bit more than you, you would normally pay if you went on a day out. There is also an art gallery where you can purchase some of the most amazing real art and when I say real art I don't mean prints I mean these are actual 
paintings and the prices do vary from what I could see from about £160 to I think £2,500 depending what it was that you like but you can buy artwork of the castle and there's also a gift shop. Now the gift shop is as any gift shop would be you know I think we brought a couple of things we spent about £10 on four things which wasn't too bad and there is some um, Last Kingdom merchandise but it's not vast that we didn't buy any of that really we just got a Last Kingdom bookmark so you can go in and out of the ground as much as you want as well up until four o'clock when they shut the gates don't let anyone in or any new people in and then the castle's actually shut at five so you could spend all day there if you wanted to going in and out the castle have lunch breakfast dinner there if you wanted as well so going to the exhibition itself so it is really exciting that there is a Last Kingdom exhibition and you're able to see some of the clothing. Now if you follow me on TikTok you've probably seen these videos already but I will just put them up here of the things that I took. There's not a vast amount there so just to give you a bit of highlight you've got Uhtred's sword, Serpent's Breath and you've got his dagger wafting, you've got Skade's outfits, you've got Finnan and You've also got some of Alfred's Chronicles. Now, they are all props, but they were amazing by themselves. And there were some maps and things as well that you could look at, which were also used in the TV show. But that's kind of the extent of it. It is literally one room. You're not gonna find lots of Easter eggs and things hidden around. So if you're going to go just for the exhibition, it's, it's just one room. It is, it is just one room. There's not really much more I can say than that. But it is quite nice to be up and up close and seeing, you know, a TV series that you love so much and, and kind of seeing the bits that went into it. In a way, it almost came over a bit underwhelming because you would like to see more. You would like to see more characters' clothing or maybe some of the Viking props that were used. Maybe something from our Ragnar or, you know, maybe some of the necklaces, something like that. But that wasn't really there. There was not as much but the rest of the castle definitely makes up for it the rest of the castle was just absolutely stunning and there's so many great photo opportunities where you can have pictures with the beach behind you or the castle behind you you can you know, take a picture with a cannon or at, at the windmill things like that there, there's just so much that you can do outside the exhibition that if you're interested in history anyway I would suggest that you go. Before we went back to the car for our five and a half hour drive home we went down to the beach and that was worth the five pound parking all by itself. So the beach is off the North Sea so it was cold water. I'm not gonna lie it was very cold but the sand was like walking on flour. It was so soft and there were no pebbles on the beach either. It was a proper sandy beach, whether that is man-made or whatever, don't know, but it was amazing. We took our shoes off and we walked along the coastline with the water over our feet and it was amazing. But it's also dog friendly. And the reason I say this, and I'm making a point about this, is a lot of beaches in the UK are not dog friendly between I think it's like March and October. So you have to take your dog to the beach, let's say to Wales, in the winter and it's you're not enjoying it they're probably not enjoying it as much because it's cold but the fact that this was dog friendly and we were if we we didn't take our dogs we didn't really realize it was dog friendly but the fact that we could have and all these dogs were running around and playing in the water and playing with balls it was just such a cool thing to see but also we could see the castle from the beach and that made an amazing photo as well. I do think if you were there at sunset that a photo from the beach of the castle would be absolutely stunning. So there are a few restrictions around sort of filming and stuff at the castle. So no drones obviously, um, flash photography is not allowed. All in all, if you are into history, if you like castles, I would really recommend it. It is such an amazing place with a lot of history. It's quiet. I don't mean the volume of people, I mean the area. It was so quiet. It was such a nice change from day to day noise and life. There's so much to see and there's so much to learn around this castle and the impact and contribution it's had to the world. You know, 
you can look into its history around World War One and World War Two. You can look at what they're doing with it now and what their plans are and it's really it was like nothing else I'd seen. I would really recommend going, as I've said, not just for the exhibition. If you like history, you like pretty places, you like sandy beaches, any of those for me are a good enough reason to go and visit the castle. Now the reason that we stayed just outside of Bamber is because it was really expensive to stay in Bamber. So Newcastle, travel lodge, 30 quid, easy, happy days. But that's all from this video guys. If you would like to see any more of my castle content, do let me know. We are planning to go and visit a few other places this year. If you like this sort of video, let me know and I will do another review of where we've been. But also if you want to see some of the pictures or some of the videos that I've created from my trip to Bamber, follow me on Instagram and TikTok and you'll see those there. But don't forget to subscribe guys so you don't miss out on any of the future content. We now post twice a week and I'll see you in the next one.